Hi everyone, welcome to the Publishing Informant Show. Today I'm speaking to Victoria Gherkin, who is from Podium Entertainment. Now Podium Entertainment are specialists in creating audiobooks, and they basically work a bit like a publisher's. You give them the rights to books and you get royalties, but they create all of the audiobooks. They do it really professionally. So in this episode, what we're going to be talking about is some tips for you about if you're thinking about doing audiobooks for your books, then how can you create a book that is really professional? But if you are going to use someone like Podium to do that whole process for you, we go through exactly step by step everything you would need to know and need to do in order to get your books ready for someone like Podium to go and create your books. It's an absolutely fascinating episode because I've only ever done my audio books entirely by myself. You know, the books have been, I've hired someone to do the speaking and do the narration, and then I've done a publishing myself. But in this episode, we're talking about how you can do that more professionally. So it's been really fascinating. And I think you're going to get a lot out of it if you are thinking about doing audiobooks. So I hope you enjoy the episode and we'll speak again soon. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Publishing Informant Show. It's Teddy here, and I'm here with Victoria Gherkin, who is the publisher at Podium Entertainment. Welcome, Victoria. Thanks for having me. Delighted to be here. Thank you. So I know you're in the US at the moment, but you're from the UK. So have you? when did you move over to the US? Oh, gosh, about a million years ago. Uh, no, not <laughs> quite. Um, 30 years ago. It's like it, a lot in dog years. Um, yeah, I moved uh, to the States in 1994 um, for, a, um, for a job, very different kind of job, and thought I was going to be here for five years. And um, here I am, 30 years later. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been an adventure. Um, I am American now, and I sound a bit American, which my English family uh, gives me a lot of grief for. But uh, (laughs) I will probably start to sound more British as I speak to you over the course of this uh, this conversation. I'm the same, but I moved north, so and I don't haven't got a northern accent yet, so uh, (laughs) I get the same. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) Um, You'll be saying saying by gum. Yeah, I'm saying by gum. Yeah. American listeners aren't going to know what that means, um, but we'll, we'll let them look. We'll let them Google it. <laughs> so, how long have you been in the audiobook industry or the or the publishing industry? So, I um, I started out uh, twenty two years ago um, yeah. working for um, Little Random, uh, which is uh, the Random House imprint that is now part of the um, huge uh, Penguin Random House. Um, I I started working in subrights, selling audio, funnily enough, uh, right. and foreign rights and other other subsidiary rights um, that the publisher gets, you know, as part of a book publishing deal. We can talk yep. about that uh, if you have questions about subrights. Um, so I did that for um, a few years in New York um, at. Little Random, and then at Knopf, A.A. Knopf, um, which is the publisher of, you know, oh, all kinds of very literary greats, yep. um, including actually Bill Clinton, not to get political, but we did right. Bill Clinton's memoir uh, when I was there. And um, I was in, I had moved into publicity, uh, a publicity role, um, as well as selling um, serial rights, so selling um, magazine um, excerpts. Yep. And from that, I kind of, well, A, I moved to Denver for a job, for my husband's job. And so it was kind of an opportunity to do something different. And my former boss, who was the head of publicity, had always had a nagging annoyance um, that in publicity, we would build up authors, help their careers, get them on the Today Show, and then they would get a speaking agent and then the agent would book him out and the book would be nowhere to be seen. And this was a really big annoyance for him. So he had the idea and I joined him um, in starting the Knopf Speakers Bureau. And we started from nothing with no authors and no no, de- no <laughs> deals, no gigs, and build it up into, you know, like a going concern. And um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed um, working so closely with our authors and, you know, helping them expand their audience into doing paid speaking engagements um, and booking them at, you know, lectureships and that sort of thing. And so that was sort of like the natural more, 
I guess, that has kind of taken me to where I am at Podium. Yeah. Um, and I joined Podium in 2016 um, on the other side of the rights conversation. So instead of selling rights, I'm now buying audio rights from authors right. and publishers. And um, so it was kind of a natural progression. And I think my time working really closely with the authors that I represented at the Speakers Bureau, very closely, you know, helping them build their platform really put me in good stead for working very closely and very directly with our authors at Podium, um, who tend to be unrepresented, tend not to have agents. And so we provide, you know, a lot of advice yeah. and, you know, some close, um, we have close relationships, which I really enjoy. Sorry, so long answer to where I came from, <laughs> but it was 20 so, years. <laughs> so basically, in summary, you know a lot about the book publishing process. Uh, that, that your credentials are very clear. <laughs> I know a thing or two. I know yeah. a thing or two. I've seen a thing or two. Although I have to say, you know, being, you know, having been in um, traditional publishing, and I think I may even have this in my bio on the website, potentially, I can't remember. I haven't looked at it recently, but, um, you know, I... I came from that world and I'd been out of it for a while when I joined Podium, but it was like a revelation of what was happening in the independent author space that was amazing. It was really yeah. amazing. And I had little to no um, understanding of that until I joined Podium. And it was, I mean, it's just, uh, I sort of came into a, podium a few years after you know the real revolu revolution started like yep. with kindle and sort of 2010 2012 um so by the time i arrived it was well underway um in 2016 um but what it has done to allow authors and you know people with a story that deserves to be read and enables them to get it out there and get, get it in front of readers is just amazing. I mean, yeah. the slush piles at Random House, as we called them, you know, they get looked at like once every six months or something. So, right, okay. you know, I know that there's a lot of stories out there and the fact that people can, can get them in front of readers now is, it's just fantastic. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Um, there's so many opportunities out there for different types of books. Like I totally agree. Um, what, yeah. t tell me a bit. Let's let's talk about a bit about Podium. Um, like, what is Podium? Like, I I know I know you do a lot of audiobook productions and stuff, but I think a lot of people won't necessarily have heard of uh, wouldn't know that's a thing. You know, they'll they'll know about audio production through you know the, the doing it through themselves or doing it through ACX or something like that. But mm -hmm. how does Podium work? Like, what? Just give us an overview of like what it does and uh, how it does it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, I mean, we saw a great opportunity um, in 2012 when Podium was founded, which is, um, you know, a lot of, lot of independent books being published by KDP. Um, I don't think ACX existed at that time. So there wasn't really a good way for authors to get their books into the audiobook format. And, and honestly, the market was much smaller. I mean, it was a much, much smaller demand for audiobooks and, and the expense of producing it and every, everything was complicated. So um, the founders of Podium realized that there were a lot of really good books that could be made into really good audiobooks that people will then, you know, buy. Um, and so that was really the genesis of the company um, for being a audiobook publishing provider to specifically independent authors, mainly publishing in the sci-fi, fantasy, um, and romance spaces. I mean, the, the, so, that is where indies are really successful. Yeah. So and you're predominantly fiction books. Predominantly, yes. We do. We definitely do um, some topical nonfiction. Um, but again, working with a lot of indies, the, the, the indie content doesn't seem to hew very much to nonfiction yeah. um, sort of books. I mean, we've definitely got we got a lot of self help. Um, I mean, we've we've, we've partnered with um, Bambella um, on a few books, which is they're a um, really 
great nonfiction publisher. Um, we've sublicensed some of their books. Um, and we have um, a, The Millionaire Mindset is a recent book, Brian Preston's okay. book um, that yep. we published in audio. Um, we did a book about Bitcoin, very well timed, um, when Bitcoin was very much yep. in everybody's interest. <laughs> so yeah, we do. I'm, I'm not saying we don't do nonfiction, but yes, it's definitely a lesser portion of what we do. Yep. So, you know, audiobook publishing involves acquiring that right from the yep. author. Um, we, you know, we do a license, we do a con that's a contract, um, and it's for a fixed term. And we pay for all the production, all the marketing, everything is, is paid for by the publisher. So we're not like, for higher house um we, and we're certainly not like a vanity press or something like that where your an author is being asked for money we do that is not what we do um and then we pay royalties to the author based on sales of the book audio so, so that's so this is what i was going to come on to next so it's, so your your ears different to using a service such as like acx or even like finding your own uh, narrators through upwork or something because what it, it, you're kind of you're, well. You are publishing the book in in, in a certain way. You're, you're taking the book. You're buying the rights to it, and then you're uh, doing the work to get those books published. Um, Correct. It... So yeah, I mean, we're taking on the risk and the investment yeah. of of creating this other edition. Whereas if you are going, you know, through ACX or um, other, you know channels to get your to get your audiobook made you're either paying for the narrator yourself um, yep. which tends to be a per finished hour amount obviously then you're paying for everything but you get to keep all the royalties that are garnered by the sales right so yes you pay for it but then you get everything um or you do um you know acx offers up a um royalty share deal wherein you are paired with a narrator who's willing to work under these under those terms um meaning you don't pay them anything but or that you you may have to pay for like post production i don't totally know how that works in practice but it but fundamentally the deal is the narrator takes a risk the author takes a risk and then you split the royalties yeah. and that's acx you know manages the money side of it um which is again a, a, like that's a a pretty good option right if if you can pair up with a narrator um who is willing who believes in your work enough to say i'm going to give my time i'm not going to get paid for my time but i'm gonna i'm gonna record your audiobook and we're gonna market it together i mean the the yeah thing to remember with that is you are then connected to that person for the life of the contract um and i'm not sure what the term is but it's uh, you know going to be several years so if things don't work out yeah you want to get the rights back then you're going to have to negotiate with your partner basically your narrator on that deal yeah so <clears throat> with podium you've got I've been through the website. You've got like loads and loads of artists and like a really, they look like really skilled, like, re, 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 like readers and, uh, narrators, like you'd call them, I suppose. Uh, how's, we do. How's that work? Like working with performers. Yes. Performers, performers. Sorry. Performers. Yeah. How would that, how's that work with, um, so are they all, they're all like professional performers. Is that, that's kind of like the way you stand out from other platforms? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, Working with Podium um, provides authors with a team where which you don't have yourself, right? It's like making a movie. You know, would you make yeah. your own movie? You'd be doing everything. Like, are you really going to do that? You could. Um, and an audiobook is obviously not as complicated as a movie, but <laughs> it is not a simple process. And I, I think one of our greatest um, – skills we, we have a wonderful casting team and they have many many years of experience in taking the text and an author's notes 
and putting it into their cauldron and then pulling out the best performer for the characters, the world, and who might be also of interest to, you know, listeners who love that narrator on somebody else's books, which we don't hew super closely to because I'm definitely of the belief that if you've got a great production, it, I mean, yes, a narrator will bring audience to it, but, you know, compromising and saying, oh, I want this narrator because they're really, really popular in this type of genre and, and not looking at it anyone else, I think is a mistake yeah. um, because there's a lot of really good performers out there. So that's sort of our, one of our secret sources is matching the story to really great performers and then having a top quality production because it's it's not just the recording you've got to make sure it's edited properly it's all the things like when you're writing a book you know you've written the book but all the other stuff that has to happen to it's got to be proofed got to be edited (laughs) mistakes have to be corrected you know if uh so that all is something that if you were doing it yourself you've got to make sure that the narrator that you are working with either has their own post production or plan for it at least you know like that would be my my advice for authors listening to this potentially who haven't entered the audio world and are thinking okay for my first one i'm gonna i found this narrator they're keen to do it they want to help me like ask some questions about how they manage their post production okay um, and so, so given that you do all this stuff, like, all, like do all the production, handle the royalties and stuff like that, I'm guessing you must have quite strict requirements about the sorts of books you take on, not just the genres, but as in the quality of the book and like how many sales or something like that. So what would what would it be? How could someone become a, a podium uh, narrated audiobook? Come join the family. Not like we're a <laughs> cult or something. Yeah, I mean, because we are... Um, you know, we are taking a risk and we are making an investment. We, yeah. when we look at titles um, that we are thinking about um, offering on, we're looking at has this story connected with an audience, and is yeah. it an audience of a size that we think will then translate into enough audiobook sales for us to make our money back at least on production, and hopefully make much more than that and make you know, a success for the author. So that, I mean, that's not a fixed number. So I can't say like, you need to have X thousand sales in order to be considered. I mean, we have published debut authors. I mean, with minimal time on the market, Um, but we, we've seen, you know, we obviously know the market and we can tell by looking at also bots, you know, of that author, like, is it hitting an audience that we recognize and we know is voraciously looking for the audiobook edition. So that's sort of how we look at um, titles that are already on the market. And that's the majority of the new authors that we work with will have published, a uh, self-published a book yep. on and have it on Amazon. And we'll want to look at that that so listing you kind of want to see a bit of their sales history even if it's not necessarily with the the very book that they're suggesting it's like you want to see kind of their history as a writer the quality of the content yeah. like that yeah and then you get a feel for whether it's going to sell yourself yeah and we look at ratings we look at the reviews yeah. um we obviously consider we do a lot of romance so we look at trigger warnings um, and things that we think won't go over great in the audio medium because that's um you know that can be kind of a tricky area like something Mm -hmm. that will work on the page becomes much more visceral and unavoidable i guess in audio like if you're reading a book and you're not you know there's some something like wigging you out you know or like (laughs) you know (laughs) like some (laughs) some final scene or something just something that is um is not your cup of tea you can just page through it like you can jump to the next paragraph you can turn the page it's easy to do, but in audio, just the act of listening, there's no, um, there's just no way to do that. And so it's, 
such an immersive medium that sometimes there there is such a thing it's a little a little too spicy um yeah. <laughs> for us but no okay. not often <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know again it comes down to what we think will work in the market yeah, yeah and of um and we have a pretty good sense i mean we published we'll publish 2600 audiobooks this year oh wow okay uh, so we are we're definitely acquiring a lot of rights um and of course we're a series a lot of our titles are in series so mm -hmm. you know some series we've been publishing for i don't know five years and we were up to book you know 25 <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing so uh yeah it's so our our authors just like keep giving us material yeah. to publish which is great so if, if so, say one of the the listeners is uh has got some books really interested in doing some narration but maybe they're not quite at the level yet where they were with podium where like what's the best place to start and what tips have you got for people who would be like starting doing it themselves yeah i mean i think um taking you know just really thinking about this as your author business like taking a step back and like not necessarily like there's so much advice it's like you got to have an audio edition got to must yeah <laughs> i don't buy that i, I don't i mean you want to have the right audio edition you want to have an audio edition that's um going to maximize your story and if that isn't something that you can afford yourself or yeah. you know you you haven't got to the readership level that um a publisher like us or you know recorded books or any of our, our competition audible studios, you know, would be looking at, there's no, there's, I don't think there's a downside in just waiting and writing the next book and keeping going. So say you're, you know, you're starting a series. The issue with audio is, you know, it's a more expensive product fundamentally. Um, if you're publishing in KU, there's a very low barrier to entry for somebody to pick up a work by a new author and just yep. say, Hey, I'm going to give this a go. It's in KU. I yeah. haven't paying my 10 bucks a month. I'm not going to, you know, it, it's not costing Kindle anything. Limited, that is. But an audio book, what's that? So sorry, Kindle you Unlimited, you, when that. you say KU. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yes, Kindle Unlimited, which is, you know, a great. <laughs> great space for um for launching yourself as an independent author you know KU is fantastic because the barrier to finding your readers is so low I mean you can really readers who are who are experimenting and trying new things in that Kindle Unlimited environment are um they're voracious and if they find something that they really love they're going to tell everybody about it and it's really going to hit so yeah, that's a different ball game to audiobook publishing and finding an audience in audio. So I just think remembering that it is it is a very different world. I'm not saying this to be this is not scare tactics. This is just <laughs> I want to be, you know, very I want to be helpful to your listeners who are embarking on this journey, um, and to kind of rush to maybe do like a AI voice because it's free um i don't know i mean i i personally don't love what comes out um yeah. and i'm not sure you know i don't think the quality is amazing you know you, it's it's free so i'm sure a lot of money was spent to develop um the technology to make the voices um but i just don't think the result is going to help build your audience and yeah. that's what this is all about it's all about expanding your listenership your readership and your followership and i just don't think right now that um that going for that option is going to maximize the quality of the audiobook you're going to get out so yeah. it's as you said you've be... got to see your book as a business and not just as like a book right. that you're launching out yeah makes perfect sense so yeah we're, we're... and and it's something that you've spent so long writing right i mean the and and 
if you do that, you're sort of making this first impression that I'm not sure is optimal. I mean, listen, lots of people are doing it and I think it's, um, you know, it's a solution for some people. I just, uh, I really feel like the quality of the audiobook is is vital. Yeah, 100%. Now, this is quite a broad question, and uh, but w- w- how do you see there's like a general, when people have an audiobook and obviously a paperback book at the same time, do you see a general ratio between like how many of the sales would be or through audio and how many would be through the book? Or, um, or is it just too broad to pin down? Yeah, it's sort of, it is a small, the audiobook market is a smaller market than the print market. I think the audio plus ebook in the States equals print. So I think audio sales may have overtaken ebook sales this year, I think, um, in terms of like volume of revenue. So if you think about that, kind of that dynamic that you're the bulk of your consumers of your story are going to be reading it so i tend to think and i don't know how accurate this is like if you have (laughs) i don't know three to five thousand readers something like that you can probably think that you may have a third of those a third might will likely be your audiobook listeners That's the sort of, if you think about sizing the market like that, just, you know, purely statistically, like nothing to do with, well, you know, this is, you know, more of an audio audience than this one, whatever. That's, that is kind of the math that I would, I would do and suggest your listeners. But that, that, that audio or um, audience would be an additional audience that you wouldn't have had otherwise, because some people are just listening to the audio books. They're Mm -hmm. they're kind of, they are different. So whilst it is smaller, it is like, yeah. It's, it's, it's people you wouldn't have otherwise. It's not like taking away from your readership. It's just different people. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's thinking back. I remember early days of doing this job and I was you know pitching to authors to say, hey, let Podium publish your audiobook. And some were very reluctant and thought that this would be cannibalistic of, their, of the readers. I think people definitely now get, and that some readers will be listening at the same time. They will do both. In fact, yep. they will want, and they'll do um, get the audio by WhisperSync um, to add to the Kindle if they're reading in KU. Um, Audible upsells KU readers to get a discounted audiobook edition. So that's another way they're kind of trying to draw in um, listeners as well as readers. Yep. Yeah. So I definitely, it's additive for sure. This is a, um, it's it's a. There's crossover for sure, but yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a different market. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So the next question I had was uh, actually quite a bit of a different one because um, this has come from my own personal experience. So when I go to sleep, I often listen to Harry Potter because uh, I'm a bit of a nerd. Oh. <laughs> but I love listening to Stephen Fry's version of it. But um, mm. when I've listened to the American version, I don't, I can't remember his name, but basically it doesn't resonate Too with now. me any. Right? Yeah, it doesn't resonate with me anywhere near as much. Um, so. With those sort of cultural differences, and I'm not. This isn't like a anti-American thing. It's more just like, are there? Do you have that sort of cultural difference that you recommend people have? Is there is there anything people should bear in mind with that sort of thing? Yeah, well, it's funny you you say that about Stephen Fry because I think a lot of Americans also like Stephen Fry. And Audible actually <laughs> just published or they they distributed. I think it was through. Um, Pottermore, so J.K. Rowling's yeah. publishing company. And his voice is uh, the audible just, voice, isn't it? So, I think. Yeah. So they, yeah, they had Jim Dale as the American um, narrator. Yeah. And they just also put on the market the Stephen Fry editions as right. well. So it's weird. They like are not often do you have like two of the same book yeah. um, available in the same market, but with different narrators. In fact, it's you know pretty not. Yeah. <laughs> it's like against it's, the, it's the only but example. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess, again, it comes back to casting, right? It's um, what is the, what's the right story? What's the right voice for the story? So yeah. say, you know, we've, we publish a lot of um, Australian and New Zealand authors okay. and some of their stories are sort of American based, um, but, but some of them are, you know, local uh, Australian or New Zealandish stories. And so we find, 
um, a native speaker who can deliver the story in the correct accent. Um, yeah. Because it's, I mean, I, when I hear a bad British accent, which I know is what I myself <laughs> have, but I hear yeah, that. Dick Van Dyke. It is like nails. Yeah, it's <laughs> nails on the blackboard. Exactly, exactly. Um, I can't. I can't stand it. So I feel a lot of empathy with our non-American authors yeah. to make sure that we are respecting the world of the story, whether that world is based on Earth, you know, yeah. or in the UK, or there's a French character. Those are those like characteristics are really important yep. to tease out. And, and this would be another piece of advice um, to your authors, to the authors listening to this is not to gloss over the preparation part of audiobook publishing. Yep. So whether you're doing it with a publisher or yourself, really helping the narrator understand where the characters are coming from are they, you know, old, young, the gender, the but these native accents? Suddenly, you know, you've got a narrator who starts voicing a character in a certain way, and then, like on page sixty, it was like, oh, and he said in his, you know, guttural Dutch accent, something like that, <laughs> and they're like, oh goodness, I have just spent sixty pages not doing a Dutch accent. <laughs> That can all be avoided by just keeping in mind, and you may even make notes as you're going along, as you're writing the book, and just having like a maybe an audiobook notes document open to say, this is the accent I'm giving this character, and I'm, I'm going to be helping my narrator by being so prepared. So that's how we think about those kind of native accents. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some... Like epic fantasy sort of lends itself to a British accent. And we right. have, you know, some fantastic fantasy narrators like Simon Vance and Tim Gerard Reynolds, uh, who are, you know, they're just, they've sort of got that voice of that sort of, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but this sort of other world, like Middle Earth kind of, yeah. uh, kind of world. And they, but then they'll do, you know, accents of the characters and there could be characters who are sort of, you know, from the low countries and they'll come up with the appropriate accent or in their creativity, they, they characterize based on the words that you have written, these characters that then come to life in the audiobook, And that is the sort of like alchemy that occurs when you've got a really great narrator who can get their teeth into a really great story and some of our authors will be like you know this was amazing and like some of them are crying you know they're yeah. so um they're so pleased with with how the audiobook has turned out um so i guess that's all i that would be my long answer to you know how we handle those kinds of things it's yeah. it's all about the story of course and do you work with the authors as well like in terms of like choosing the casting and things like that it's been help like do the do the authors get to help you with choosing the right person for that as well? Or is it a case of you're taking yes, the right, yes, well, it? right? The beauty of it is they don't have to come to us with ideas because we yeah. are full of ideas. Um, yeah. If they do, if they have somebody in mind, you know, some of our authors, um, you know, I work with uh, Sean Inman, who I don't know if he's in your group, but he's pretty active in, in sort of the self-publishing world. He's got a long series, uh, Middle Falls Time Travel, that each book is a different point of view and a different character it, they're they're tied together all the action goes on in this town um but each main character from whose perspective the story is told in each book is different yeah and he comes to me with a new book and he'll say and he also listens to a lot of audiobooks and he'll be like this would this is who i love and so we put it to our casting team and they're like, yep, we agree. Let's go get that person. And we have, we definitely have an all-star 
array array <laughs> it's like the, the firmament of the gods on his on his series but sometimes he'll come and say you know i don't really know you know this is the character um i've listened to an audiobook by such and such a person and they kind of reminded me of that and then we'll find somebody that he hasn't named so from from us, our perspective yeah bring us your ideas and tell us who you like if you've especially if you listen to a lot of audiobooks but a lot of authors read and they don't listen to audiobooks mm -hmm. so like coming to us the whole point of us helping with casting is that you don't have to have all the answers um, and we love you know making authors really happy and delighted with the choices that we make yeah brilliant that's that's really that's really useful thank you um the last question was the um going through a couple of success stories you've had like have you got any specific examples of some guys that have done really well like um that maybe you can share to give us some inspiration to the new people yeah i mean well i guess sean inman again would be my example i mean this is an author who yeah we're like on book 21 um what's the name again we sean publish milligan uh sean inman i-n-m-o-n inman yeah um you know, we have long term partnerships with authors like um j n cheney um yep. is an example he's a sci fi author and we've published i mean probably a hundred books with him at least wow. um one of my um early mystery thriller authors um is sally rigby she's from the u k yes i know and that. although she was living in do you know her Yes, she was living in New Zealand when when um, we first contracted. But anyway, but she's a Brit and she writes a Brit um, mystery series, uh, police procedural. And um, again, for her, so you know, she didn't have a ton of ideas of who should be the narrator. Um, but we found a woman called um, oh God, now I'm not going to remember Claire Corbett, uh, who was a TV actress in the UK and has been in various things and just has done an amazing job. Um, I think we're on book 13 yeah. um, with her, like at 13. So, you know, it's it runs the gamut. I mean, we've we have books, audio books that sell more than the ebook yeah. performs. And then we have the other way around. But our, our ideal is that we are, you know, we're we're um bringing home the bacon for, yeah, uh, definitely. for our author. Yeah, well, that was really helpful. I mean, there's been loads of great tidbits there, especially for people who are just starting out to uh, to pick up on. I think that's um, there's there's loads to take away from there. So thank you very much. Um, so just before we go, just got one the one last question. So what is the book you know that you recommend that everyone should be reading at the moment that maybe isn't? Ah, uh, well, okay. So I thankfully you told me I was going to have this question. So I have a minute amount of preparation. I have a prop which I guess if you're listening to this, you won't see if you're listening through the podcast. We can app, describe it. But if you're we can on describe it. YouTube, I'm going, to, I'm going to describe it. So Podium doesn't just publish audiobooks. So we uh, we um, launched a full publishing operation um, like three years ago. And um, we it's a lesser part of what we do, but it's really a very important um, initiative for us. And earlier this year, we... Um, signed a distribution deal with Two Rivers, which is an Ingram company. And one of our first titles that they've been distributing for us is the Pucking Wrong Number, Sierra Jane. <laughs> right? yeah. this, is a, this is part of a series. It's a hockey romance series. That wasn't a typo, and by the way. Is, it does actually say Pucking for people who can't see the it title. Does say pucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> um, It's a, and hockey romance is on fire. And wow. it's really fun to be publishing um such a great series the author is amazing um so that's been a lot of fun we've been talking about it a lot internally over the last um few weeks and we're we're bringing back oh sorry we're bringing out all four books in the series that are have been available in pod we are publishing in print um the author has the ebook rights and we also publish the audio so we're doing these kind of hybrid um arrangements with with authors, you know, that we have a, a relationship with and some we don't, you know, that are new authors to us, but where we see the opportunity to really help them expand their audience. Uh, yeah. And that is, that's what we're doing here with this print book. Um, in terms of what I am addicted to, in terms of reading, 
Yeah. I don't get jealous a lot of other publishers because I feel like we do got a great thing going here. <laughs> but one of the series that I really, really wish we had in our house is Mick Heron's um, Slough House series. Oh, amazing. I don't know. Amazing. He's so good. Yeah. Um, my stepmother recommended this series to me a couple of years ago. And I actually started with the audiobooks. Um, Gerald Doyle is the is the narrator. And yep. he is amazing. He's wow. so good. So good. And then when the Apple TV show came, I was like, oh, surely it's never going to be as good as the audiobooks. Anyway, it is it is it's also amazing. really good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Gary Gary Oldman is Jackson Lamb, and he's fantastic. So yes, the Slough House series by Mick Herron is my um, is my go to right now. Great, that's really good. Pleasure. Really good recommendations. I can highly recommend those second books. I've read them, not listened to them, but they that they are they're really good. Yeah, um, yeah, very English. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, brilliant. No, thank you so much for that. There's been loads of great stuff there. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with Podium or follow you personally, where's the best place for them to get in touch or to follow you? Yeah, so go to podiumentertainment.com, which is our yep. website, and we have uh, tabs on there for if you are an author and you want to get in touch with us um, or if you are a narrator and you want to work with us, there are different um, forms to fill out. Mm -hmm. um, and but follow us in all the places. So we are um, very active on Instagram at Podium Entertainment. Yep. And we are building our TikTok uh, situation. I'm okay. old enough to say this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but our, uh, we have a lot of fun on Instagram and Facebook. So I would definitely recommend um, checking us out there and uh, seeing all the fun stuff that our marketing team does. I haven't even mentioned them. I've been talking about casting, but our marketing team is absolutely fantastic. One for another um, time. So you go, what's that? One for another time. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We talk about audiobook marketing next yeah, exactly. time. Next yep. time, chapter two. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, right, Victoria. Thanks, yeah, we'll speak soon. Bye. Pleasure.